Hey there, everyone. Welcome back again. This is Voices of Courage, another great episode with another amazing guest. Uh, today, I have the honor of having us being able to have a great discussion with the lovely Kimberly Fields. And I know Miss Kimberly Fields and met her through the um, Christ. Christ Council. Kim, did I say that right? Because I always get it. Uh, Christ the, the Council, Council, Council of Christ. Christ. <laughs> Council of Christ. <laughs> always have that problem. Right but now. yes, this is where I've met the lovely Miss Kimberly Fields. Um, I met her in the truth. And that's what we're going to be talking about today and letting you know that Christ is amongst us and he walks the earth. So thank you for joining me, Sister Kimberly. How you doing? Word up, word up. Peace, peace, love, love. Oh my goodness! Thank you for having me. Um, I'm honored uh, to be uh, that you even asked, and you know, to be on your show. Thank you for the opportunity. Oh yes, most definitely, most definitely. Like I said, thank you for you know uh, accepting the uh, um, the invite, and you know, this is a this is like a topic that is some is like. So many emotions that come with it because you like it's important, imperative. You want people to really get this, but then it's like it's amazing, and we get excited, and we're just like, I, I can't wait. <laughs> this and, is done. Yeah, I, can't, I can't wait for you know, more to see. You know, um, you know, it's, it's truly a time to rejoice, although it doesn't always feel that way. It's truly a time to be rejoicing, um, but you know, life on our journeys as we're enduring, you know, the challenges of life, I should say, you know, can kind of make it hard to see the sun um, or the light at the end. Um, but it's still a, definitely a, a time for us to rejoice, to be rejoicing, because we're at the end. Yes, very much so. And I know that <clears throat> for a lot of the listeners, they probably are like, well, what, what, what are they talking about? And that's why I wanted, um, you know, Sister Kimberly to come on and give us her her experience, her also her testimony, but also to be able to share um, what she knows about how we even know the truth and that Christ is walking the earth. And then we're these days are days to not the end, but the beginning, end of something, but the beginning of something that you can Absolutely. even imagine, right? Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. The time as we once knew, as we once knew it um, is coming to an end. Um, the the true Sabbath is actually being ushered in um, with the new kingdom, um, and it's it's all of that really speaks to really just the change, the shifts and changing of the mindsets, uh, coming into higher knowledge, higher knowing uh, of who you are and. Uh, um, religion, uh, religious doctrine, um, yeah. to get to, to get more understanding, um, of who the father, our creator truly is. We'll say, yeah, well, you know, my, my kids, we, we've always celebrated this. So we really want to think about that, you know, right. or they just really just believe it and never heard or probably like, oh, that's a conspiracy theory. Cause you know. Right. Some pastors put a number on people. Fairy tale. Why continue to sell the fairy tale? That's one exactly. thing. My children. I don't. I don't sell them a fairy tale. I mean, my children are. They they vary in ages, but you know, I speak to them in their their level of understanding of you know all things. You know, right. that's what questions are for. That's what what conversation is about. Um, girls tend to absorb what they get from their mothers boys tend to observe it's a difference they watch what their mothers do girls absorb so it's very important to me you know to be in um of good mind and you know um and a great example for them you know when it comes to the spirituality um how I walk and, and, and carry myself and things, all of that. Um, and in turn, it shows in who they are and who they're becoming. Um, yep. And it's very important not to sell the fairy tale, but to give the truth. Yep. 
Very much so. I don't see people don't get it. They just, I don't know. It's like you're willingly to pass this down to your to your kids. You know what I mean? Like the, the lie and it makes no sense. But, you know, um, like many will be chosen, right? But what was it? Many will be yeah, called and only few will be chosen? Many, <laughs> many are called, few are chosen. And the few that are chosen is, is on a narrow path. That broad yeah. road leads to destruction, point blank period. Self destruction, mass destruction, destruction in you know, of all in all ways. Yeah. And I've I know like my own drum. Yeah. And I know with you as many of the others in the um the group, we've we've all had like these significant stories where kind of similar where something happened or we you know as growing up or younger where we, you know, some had dreams, some had, we were just different type of thinkers. We questioned things and, and it brought us to this place. Right. And so, you know, I know I have my story, but for you, like, what was it like, uh, like were you in doctrine and went to the churches and stuff? And then like, when, when did you realize, like when you heard the truth and, and you knew it, like when did that, what, when was that, what was that experience like? And when did it happen for you? Wow. Um, okay. I, I, I was, I had a good childhood. Um, uh, my parents did what they knew. And, um, one of the greatest gifts my parents have, have shown me, um, has been their dedication and devotion in what they know when it comes to religion and their dedication to church and the fellowship. For me, um, I was about nine years old when I realized what I was seeing in church didn't necessarily match my reality. So I've always, you know, been the kind of child to, to I was very inquisitive. I've always asked questions. I always was very analytical, still very much so. Um, so I would analyze things um, and, you know, I still, I needed the truth and everything. And um, I, I've always had that from a child. So in my adult years, I would say around the time when I had my son um, and I changed my diet and how I was eating, I started to eat more clean, started, I stopped with all the permanent hair and all that kind of stuff. I just, you know, started to really get into my, get into myself and get to know myself. Um, it was after the birth of my son, who will be 22 um, in a couple of months. Um, so it's been about 20 years that I've been on this journey. It started out as self-identity. Um, I read the Bible a lot. I fellowship with multiple uh, churches in the, in the Washington uh, metropolitan area in, in, in Maryland. Um, but a lot of the things that I was seeing, it still wasn't adding up for me. I still had a lot of questions. I still had a lot of conviction. Any, every church that I've been to or have experienced, I still, you know, left. Although I may have gotten a, a really good uh, uh, prosperity, um, feel good uh, sermon, you know, it only felt good for the moment. It was an emotional thing. It wasn't necessarily. A spirit, a spiritual thing for me during that time. So I was, because I was always seeking, continuing to seek. I still needed the truth. I needed the truth. I wanted to know who, what God was, who, what Jesus was, who, what I am, and where I come from. Um, all of that. So you know, all my studies. I mean, all my journey. I studied a lot. I've um, journeyed through several, several different. Um, I mean, I've read a lot of books. Um, I've experienced the Hebrew Israelite camp. That was kind of my turning point. And uh, knowing I'm getting closer to the truth because <laughs> I thought I knew that, you know, I thought I was onto something there, but um, I started to see and feel the same convictions and things, you know, like, no, not quite there yet. But at least it opened my eyes to continue to seek um, that one truth. And I'll just make a long story short. I came to, um, uh, uh, what was it? It was a painting on Yaju Judah's 
uh, old page. He had an old Facebook account. Um, I think it was back in 2016, if I can be, if I, to be exact. I don't necessarily remember. It might have been a little earlier than that. But um, came across this page. I was, you know, I had left the church, the, the, the Hebrew church. I had left the religious church or Christian church or what have you. So I was in my, in my own, um, trying to figure it out myself, navigating through the earth, through life, trying to figure it out myself. And um, I ended up reaching out to Yaju on Facebook Messenger. Um, asked, I asked about the painting. Um, I was able to ask a, a, few, a few other questions or many other questions. I actually had a very enlightened conversation um, that kind of made everything that I had experienced, everything that I had read, everything that I had studied, it just kind of made it all connect and make sense, as, especially when it came to the um, Jesus, the character, and who and what Christ is and why Christ had to come in this time for us in the living so that's pretty much for me uh, how I've come to this through um, Yaju Judah and, you know, hearing the, hearing the Father's voice, hearing the truth. The, the, the scriptures, you know, the way that he would break the scriptures down resonated with me physically and spiritually. It resonated as a whole and continues to do so. No other leader, camp leader, or preacher or minister have been able to show me the word the way Christ God Judah has. I can, I can agree to that. Most definitely. I tell people, I'm like, I promise you, no matter who you're up here trying to tell me uh, who, who tells, speaks truth, this is nothing... You've never heard anything like this before, and you're never going to hear anything. Right. <laughs> you know, that, like it's, you it's, know, it's that new song, and it's the thing. It's that one thing that everyone is truly seeking, but don't realize they're seeking. Because there's right. one, tr there's one chief, there's one way. Only one was anointed to be able to unseal the scriptures. So we we may be able to read the scriptures, you know. Uh, front cover to, to to the end cup to the last cover and you know we might be able to um, re, um repeat or memorize all this all the scriptures and all of that you know all that's great but for what yep exactly you hear people say i know the bible um by heart and i, I, I quote scripture blah, blah blah and i just be like okay um shit, uh, a monkey you teach a monkey how to read and like i mean i'm just saying like you can recite stuff and memorize it, recite it. But understanding, that's a different story. And if everybody's got a different under interpretation and understanding, Yaju <laughs> Juice is that soap vessel. Without a shadow of a, of a doubt, for me, Yaju Judah is that chosen vessel. And I mean, yeah. I and I asked for it. I mean, you know that scripture that um, it says, um, at what ask and you shall receive? I asked a long time yep. ago mm -hmm. and kept, you know, kept getting tripped up and flipped around and tossed to and fro up until I, you know, got the counsel from Yaju. Up until that, I haven't, um, I've only gotten closer, haven't gotten it all. I've only gotten pieces, you know, fragments of what people thought the truth is rather than the truth from the most high. Right. Yep. Uh, and, it, and you just know, you, you know what I mean? The piece is like, you, it's like doing a puzzle. You'd be like, oh, and then you put, and then you, you put it together. You'd be like, oh, there it go right there. Yes. <laughs> yes. That piece is that rest. That piece is that Sabbath. That piece is that, that, that mindset is, is where you come to you. I mean, as we are ascending, um, sometimes we're descending, all depending on where your mind is at, what you what you into, and all of that. But in 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 best case chances, we should be ascending 
to higher thought, higher frequency, energetically, you know, eating live foods, all that kind of stuff. I mean, my diet ain't all the way together, but I mean, I know what I got to do for myself right. and my children. Yeah. Yep. And you said something important. You like you said, you have pieces and fragments and and like, you know, some people, you know, like, you know, how they say there's always like with the lie, there's some little bit of truth and like, you know how you'll hear people talk about like ascending in, in our minds and right. you know like uh, vibration and all that stuff. But it's like right. in a different, you well, know what I mean? They're missing the the important, you know, the component well, and they don't really have the full understanding, but they're right about the consciousness and, and ascending. But, right, you know. And a lot it. of that is because of what the media is used for, what, um, Hollywood yep. movies are, are used for they're used to develop the perception and yep. control the and control the minds of of a people and and emotions of a people or not just of people of people period yeah um, and also to hide of people they never wanted the truth to come out but the truth had to come out they've always had to put the truth in plain sight you just have to have that discernment and everyone yep. doesn't have you know. Uh, unfortunately, everyone doesn't have discernment. You think you do, but it's on another level. Yeah, that's very true. Do Do you think? Because I I like when I you know got the whole truth right. Um, I still felt like there was certain things that the creator did bless or like give to to certain people you know what i mean like you said like some people don't have the discernment and some I people you know i feel like there were certain things about me that were different and that I, that were were given to me you know because i always was a, a different than family and, and i always to the day i have a different mindset in the way i see things that left me open to even be able to to be in in truth right do you think that god like do you think that that's done by design Absolutely. We were chosen um, before we were put in our mother's wombs. He already knew us. He already gave, gave us purpose. We just got to walk it out. It, I kind of hit hard right now. It made me kind of tear up when you said that. <laughs> it's the truth. Mm -hmm. that to walk it out. Our, our stories are already written, but no one can tell our stories for us. We tell our own story. That's why these po podcasts like yours, you're doing a beautiful, wonderful, and amazing thing that is going to last for forever because it's been documented. And that's something that we can thank our ancestors for, for documenting things um, and their experiences. But as we know, a lot of stuff was whitewashed. A lot of stuff was, you know, um, distorted uh, to make us uh, hate each other and to hate ourselves. Hate is something that's taught. It's not something that's innately in God's children. Yep. Very true. Very true. And you, you know, can always the... identify a God's child by his stripes or whether or not that hate level, you you, you know, you, yeah. you can identify God's child, whether hate is with him or it's not. Yes, most definitely. Most definitely. <laughs> That is very, very true. Um, like even with with Yaju, like it always takes me to the word like meekness stands out. He's like the yeah. epitome of like what meek is. And so yeah. that's why when I'll be hearing these people, how they because you know, you can hear this and, and like like how Brother Clinton said, like it took him a minute, right? But he was lashing out. He wasn't you know, right. piercing he him and saying, Oh, you, you ain't to the spirit. Right. To the spirit. That's the main mm -hmm. thing about Yaju that people miss. They, they don't realize the spirit that they're speaking to. Right. They realize have they really have no idea of the spirit that they're, they're speaking to, of his majesty. No idea. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. I'll be like, yo, yeah. You are going to have that on your face when you freaking <laughs> realize well, what is happening. Well, as long as people are thinking Jesus is going to come from the sky, they may as well expect him to come with Santa Claus come December 25th because <laughs> Jesus is supposed right. to be coming to get our stuff back. So we'll see what happens. He That's truly ain't coming from the sky. Lord have mercy. Where's you know, Waldo? Girl, man, let me tell you, I was asking somebody earlier, I was like, if I was to tell you something, let's just say I tell you 
Christ is amongst us. He is literally walking the earth. You would look at me like I was crazy, right? Right. But at the right. same time, you think he's coming from some cloud in the sky, like you when would we ever <laughs> see anything like that? And that, I'm the, the, the crazy one, okay? <laughs> Absolutely correct. The irony of that is, is it really is comical almost, you know. But once upon a time, I thought the same things. Yeah, because I did that's too. what was told to me. Yep. But then, you know, when you turn that off, and it's so important to to release what you thought you knew. Because we don't know anything at all. We could never know all there is to know about our Father, our Creator, the Most High, Source, whatever you want to call Him. Because people have given Him many, many names. Um, but there's only one Source. Period. Yep. I mean, that lie was so thick and so real because I, I even believed that mess too. I used to say, and I was just regurgitating. I was like, oh yeah, when Jesus comes back, he heal, he'll be caught up in the air because he can't come down here and touch this, this ground is sinful. So, But that's I mean. what made us realize how <laughs> simplistic our thoughts are in comparison to the most high. That's what made me realize that, that point you just made. That's so simplistic in how our thinking when we when we were thinking like that. But when right. we give ourselves over, empty our cups and get, you know, let it let the spirit fill fill us back up. You know what I'm saying? Then, you know, it, you you hear the scriptures differently because that's just what it is. You're supposed to hear the word. Right. Babies that's don't learn anything. Um, babies learn first through sound. Yep. We all learn from sound first audio. So, I mean. No matter how many scriptures you know, how many books you read, or how many schools you'd have been to, it does not trump the spirit of the Most High. Ain't that the truth? Oh man, oh man, stuff that I used to think and believe. But you know, when like but you it's said, but part of it's part of it's all right. relative. It's relative because for, to me, I think it has developed not only our character. But it's developed our spiritual aptitude, the depth of spirituality. Because, I mean, I think the scriptures say something to the effect of faith. You only need as little as a mustard seed. Yep. Mm -hmm. But then when you think about on a grandiose scale, your faith, how big is your faith? How much do you believe Christ is going to come? Just what you read scripture, Christ is going to come to save you. Save from the ill thinking, the disease, the, you know, all of that. Transgressions, iniquities. Yep. It's all in the yep. mindset. Very much so. Yep. You're so right. You hit the, you hit the, the, the nail on the head with that, right? Uh, I always question people that like be in the church so hardcore, and then like when certain things happen, I'd be like, "Where's your faith at?" Like that didn't even like cause you. I mean, you be in there, Lord, thank you, Lord, in the book, and then like some stuff happens in the world, and then like you go straight to the doctor, or like you look at everywhere else, but I don't hear nobody say a prayer or anything with, about God or nothing. Like, so is that is that faith? Is that just for show? Is that you know what I mean? Like, uh, you know, kind of like robotic, like you just do. Like we get up, we go to work, we do this, we well, do that. Yeah. But, yeah, really like that's part. Faith? Yeah, that's part of it. There's a lot of robots out here, <laughs> unfortunately. Right. But they but were they never now making robots, robots. <laughs> right? You know, but that's part of the matrix system. You have to br break yourself from these systems. You have to free yourself from these systems, and the only way to do that is through thought, through your yeah. your changing your mindset. Yep. That's why I like that mo that movie, The Matrix. Uh, I did a little history check on that. The person that oh, created. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love that. The concept movie. is is very real. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it's all about the mindset. And that's like the worst, you know what I mean? People always think the worst is like physical, but it's like when it comes to chains and, and being, you know, like uh like in captivity, like the the mind. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That's the worst to be you know, in captivity of your mindset being being in chains. You know, that's that's the true captivity right there. From from the pro from being programmed. I mean, from mm -hmm. the from the moment we are born to the time we're put in schools and yep. all of that, we are being programmed. Literally. 
literally just like you do a computer like yeah. they do the same stuff and that's how yeah. they actually go about doing what they do to us they, that to the point where they're like now let's just make some robots because we're really sick of it <laughs> they live well longer. i mean that's why they <laughs> manipulate the the water and the air and the i'm sorry the atmosphere and the food that's why they manipulate all these things so that they can you know utilize chemicals to to keep us docile and to keep us uh from our highest uh, potential of being. Yep. And it has worked like a charm. I ain't even gonna lie. They succeeded. Live the lie, then, you know, to his own. I mean, I, 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 I let people be who they are. Point by period. I can only be me. So, yep. I mean, I always feel like we're living a simulation um as far as when it comes to the matrix versus what our true reality is as as a being it yeah. always seems like a, a simulation living because we're living out revelations we're living out mm -hmm. prophecy in this current time but because we were tricked and lied to to made to believe and think that things happened six thousand or or billions of years ago you know that's truly affected our, not only our perception, but our lifestyles, um, socialism, yep. capitalism, all these different isms, you know, it's affected all of that. Yeah. Everything. Programming. Everything. Yes. And, and it's amazing at the same time. It's crazy, but it's amazing because you're like, bro, we are living. We're like, what's going on today? Nothing, just living out revelations and um, prophecy. You know? <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and what page we on, right? Like, you know. <laughs> Crazy, right. but, I mean, they but they think they believe the scriptures, but when you tell them or remind them of what they read about Christ coming in the living at an appointed time, nobody considers now. So when, mm -hmm. if he's coming like a thief in the night, when is Christ going to come? Is he not supposed to come in, in, in our lifetime during our existence? Or... Mm -hmm is our faith that small where we don't can't even consider the father to you know fulfill his will because that we have no power over that will yep. be done very true very mm -hmm. very very true i think people weren't ready for it. i think people got used to just like being robots and it was something they said but they never really considered the day that that it would like truly truly like have have been nobody because you know you hear a lot of people even like brother clinton he'd be like i never thought i'd be here you right know, to ever see any of this and some people just really just did they just oh, were saying, yeah and then but they thought they was gonna have to die to see him anyway right, right. Like, right. That, that never made sense to me i was like so why he why are we here then so what would the purpose of life be because i think the and it and the, after y'all y'all do it, it made more sense because I've always looked at this earth as, as um besides you know all the you know what I mean the the ill will stuff but mm -hmm. it's a beautiful work of art like oh, I've yeah. always been amazed by the trees by the sky by yes. just like the beauty in it and I'm like why yeah. would we do this and, and but we we here to but we only going to be happy happiness to die that part just never really made sense to me and I'm I felt like. Well, I'm not supposed to like like love that, you know what I mean? Like I was kind of confused, but I couldn't help but admire right. it and want to be here. So I felt like I shouldn't. Oh, I forgot. I can't, you know what I mean? I gotta go to, you know, gotta go to heaven. I shouldn't be trying to hold on and love this earth and and take care of it because this is this is the devil. Right. And, you know what I mean? It's like right. didn't add. Up. But that's why we can't take anything with us. You know, it doesn't matter what treasures we build here on earth in the physical. You can't take nothing with you. None of it is eternal, you know? So, and the way you just described that put me in mind of a book. One book that stands out to me that I read, it's also now a movie. Um, it's by Paul Young, and it's called The Shack. And the way that you just described the earth and the beauty of the earth and things like that, in relation to like the Holy Spirit or the spirit and how beautiful things are. That movie has always been a very good uh, picture of that for me. Um, of course, we know it is a movie, but with that, watching that movie with that discernment, what the way you just described it is, it's the same, it's, it is it, beautiful. 
I'm have to check that out. Yeah, it's called The Shack by Paul Young. Okay. That I down. think it was on Netflix. Shack by Paul Young. Okay. But yeah, so much, so much confusion. And I blame it. I don't care. I blame it on the church. I blame it on the pastors because they, people just be like, and I noticed how people would be like more into their pastor than they was even like God or, or, or right. Christ. You know what I mean? Like, right. you be like, oh, pastor, won't you up? Like, like, oh, pastor. I'm like, y'all, we're acting like, like <laughs> you know what I mean? I like, mean, the for every pastor. occasion, anniversary, birthday, church anniversary. I mean, you got all kinds of things and they're worshiping a man. Rather than the spirit, and, exactly. and spending their hard-earned, you know, um, money, lifting up a man that is has not been anointed, you know, by the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that, that always to bothers teach me. the book, to teach the book. I should say that. Say that. And charging you for the lies too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. You want to learn Hebrew? Come go to our Hebrew class. It's only $190 a month. Are you serious? To learn oh, something please. from another man. No, that's, that's, we don't, we don't have, I don't think we have the full scope of things. And, um, it's, it's sad to say some, you know, um, as long as people are looking for the father in the book, they will not find him. No, they will not. No, they will not. But they're just I, put words on a page. <laughs> yep. And I don't even understand that. You know, like I mean, I learned what I learned, but I never thought like I was talking like I would pray and then I would think I was like, Oh, I should pray more. You know what I mean? And and when I would like be at the belt, I would like be say like oh God, please look over me. You know what I mean? But I, I never was like, Well, God spoke to me today and he told me, but I always felt like some a presence was there. Like I, you know what I mean? Or things that'll happen. I was like, that could have only been, you right. know what I mean? Like some divine pr protection or angel or God. I thought it was God or something, right? Yeah. I think yeah. truly did. I mean, maybe it was some kind of divine, you know, something, but it wasn't the way I that I, I understood it. I feel like right. the spirit has always been with us. Um, but to, uh, I mean, in the spirit, um, but physically now that we are walking with Christ. Yeah. Definitely, definitely. And then what you just said about like not finding him in the in the book, Sister Kim. I was like, I would I would ask people right that um, never like been in the Bible or had one but didn't open it. I was like, well, how do you know God if you never even you don't know His Word if you never even read it, right? And it's crazy right. that that was my thinking because it really is. How do you know him if you never heard his voice? If you never, he don't know you. You never, right. you know what I mean? You ain't got, you got to get through the sun. If you're not, <laughs> open that part with you. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. You got to exactly. go through the sun to get to the father, but no one can explain that to how they just jumped from this, the sun. But that's what <laughs> we're, the we're in the beginning. We're yeah. in a new time, we're in a new time, a new, new phase. Yeah. I just want people to receive it. I know people will get offended and be like, oh, I never, you know what I mean? And be like, oh, that's some bull crap. That's some, and like how people be treating us like y'all crazy, y'all cult. And it's like, I guess, um, call it what you want. But if you call that true over there, you can have that shit. Because if you don't believe, but, you, better, um, you should want to believe because this shit right here is crazy. You better hope and pray there's a, a crisis. <laughs> Right, because this. Over I mean, here, people are more concerned about what Yaju looks like rather than who he is, right? Um, or the spirit that's with him. They're more focused on the physicality of things rather than so true. Hearing from him. Yeah. Like. I've always been seeking through the voice being the father. And I have more peace and more rest because of Yaju. Yaju Judah. I'll praise the Father Yaju Judah. All praises to the most high. Indeed. Yeah. But uh I know that, you know, I appreciate you sharing your, your walk and your understanding because, you know, everybody's story is going to be 
be different, right? And right. I, and I, I want that too. I want people to hear like I don't want everybody to hear like the same like he walks. You know what I mean? I want them to hear the genuine like your, you know, you Kimberly, sister Kimberly, sister Kimberly Fields, like your thoughts, your perception, what you went through, your your, you know what I mean? Your understanding. We all understand, you know, we know the truth, but it right. comes out differently through our own stories and thoughts. And I want people to be able to share, you know, like. Right. Hear that, you know, that no, like, this is a beautiful opportunity, beautiful platform. Yeah. Um, indeed. Um, I, I'm I'm grateful for the time. I'm grateful to be able to share my thoughts. Um, as you said, you know, people will people people are people, I mean, to each his own. But um and sharing my testimony and thoughts, I just hope in some things that I've shared, you know, some things the seeds have been planted. And people yeah. will, you know, at least think or listen. Yeah. Listen, listen to really hear and understand, not to condemn and and all that other stuff that you know we've been seeing people do. All of that isn't even warranted. They have to do as it says, like be 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 born again. You got to like empty out all, like literally, like when Danny, when I met Danny, and then start listening to Yaju. I I literally, I think when I first went into the the uh, the council, I literally know for a fact what it's like to like to be born again because I anything I ever exactly. knew or thought, I literally let it go. I didn't hold on to nothing. Right. <laughs> Still got I, questions I, I, that I, I, I have the same sentiments. <laughs> I can say the same. We have to empty our cups in order to hear. You won't. You won't get it. You, if you can't let go of the sermon you just heard last last Sunday, you know about you know uh, that prosperity. You know, you, you give your tithes, your ten percent, and you're gonna be blessed. Okay, there's there's more to life than that. You know that, and that's truly not the blessing that um <laughs> that that that. that they're referring to they want you to continue to uh contribute to their lifestyle right yeah why you over there stressing you pastor just he suited up booty looking all nice got a nice house and talking about what well, looks like it's working out for you but i'm still over here <laughs> you know so yeah like, make it make sense these church houses make a whole bunch of money but you know ain't that bit of truth being uh being been sown in them yeah Cause if they and did, God they wouldn't don't dwell in the body. I'm sorry, <laughs> God don't dwell in the building. Yes, yes, yes. And, and that throws people off when I say that. They be like, "Huh?" I be like, "Yeah." But the yeah, thing so you really is, should ask yourself who you worshiping in here exactly. when you step in, step foot in these doors. Who are you really worshiping? Now you think in your mind and in your heart, "Oh, I'm going to church so I can worship and fellowship with God." But that's not what's happening because God don't dwell in buildings. And the shit ain't working because y'all be up in here gossiping and doing the same old shit you did before you got in here and then when you leave Man. here. <laughs> you ain't going oh, out the community God. doing nothing. You just come in here like a robot and then you go back and do the same shit and think you're better than people because you're a church. <laughs> I mean, you. It's, unfortunately, you know, people do a lot of judging unrighteously. And have yep. no power to condemn anyone but themselves. That part. <laughs> right. Yep. They're going to learn real quick, fast, and hurry. I just hope that many do, you know, uh, get that hear, hearken to the voice. And because I want, you know what I mean? As bad as it is, I don't want to see nobody have to be on the other side of it. Because we were all alive too. You know what I mean? I just want to see these these doors closed. Yeah, for sure. I want to see these doors closed. You now you got the yeah. now you got uh, the the you've you've seen that it, they, that the churches have been exposed. So come out of it. Exactly. Come out of her. Hmm. The scriptures, man. I tell you, people, the interpretations be off. Just be gone. Vain <laughs> imaginations. Right. You'd be like, one plus one. Yeah, all, all vain imagination, you know. <laughs> like the crazier it sounds, the more you believe. You'd be like, yeah. Right. 
<laughs> that makes sense. It doesn't, but okay. <laughs> but we're living it out right now. And it, it's, it, I don't know. We, I don't know what it's going to take. That's why we need to come together. We need to, you know, just, uh, come, we need to come together. Unity. And Sister Kim, the words right there alone, prophecy and revelations, like prophecy mm -hmm. means something that, that to come, come right? Prophecy right. and revelations would be like something that's like revealed. Like, so I don't understand where's the this this disconnect. And what would 2,000 years ago even be any use to us anyway? Right. <laughs> around to even right. Why are we holding <laughs> on to, to something that never existed? What would he have done? What did he do when he came the first time? Can... Yeah, that, that part. Right. The second that time. Part. What happened the first time? <laughs> what does he have to come again for? What's the point? Oh, dear. Yeah. Yeah, people need to listen to this. I'm sorry if your feelings is hurt, listeners, but it kind of needs to be because you, you you gotta you gotta you gotta start questioning yourself, take accountability, accountability. and stop allowing other people to think for you. Yeah, man. Or tell you how to live. I mean, you know. Yeah. We have to tell our own story. That's the main thing. We've been given our story for generations. Now it's time for us to tell our own story. Yes, very much. That's why I love platforms like this and I embrace it. You, you know what I mean? Like, because you, you have the opportunity to do this. And that's why I tell people, don't waste your, make your voice purposeful when you get online. Or yes, social media. Indeed. Because it's a blessing to be able to do that and connect to the whole world. Make it count. Right. And I know the things that we're discussing probably won't um, go over for the, the popular vote. But um, that's by design also. Yeah. Many, many are, are not going to get it. They're, they're going to continue to think we have three heads. Um, but we'll soon see. Yeah, So that's true. That is so keep true. doing what you're doing, my love. You are doing amazing things. Thank you, sis. And once again, I, I so appreciate you doing this. And um, I love you. And I'm just so... So blessed to, you know what I mean, to be a part of this and to have met all of you. Yes. So it's okay. I do want to in and out a little bit, but I love you too. Okay. And, and thank you. Um, yes. Can you hear me? I do want yeah, I can hear you now. I, I said I love you too. I'm, and thank you again. I appreciate the time. Okay. And um, I, again, I appreciate I appreciate your time, and I appreciate you um, thinking of me to um, to share as well. Um, I love our family. I love what's growing. I love what's building. Um, keep doing what you're doing, sis. It's it's definitely necessary, and as you said, purposeful. This is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much. I know you got some things to tend to and we will talk soon and we can always do something, you know, like this again. And like my platform is for everyone. It's not for me. It's for voices. That's why it's called Voices of Courage. Sure. <laughs> In any way, I it just, you know, just let, let me know. Send me a text. You want me to come on? You want to chat it out? Let's do it. I'm, 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 I'm with it. I love it. I, you know, I'm, a little shy, but um, I'm here, and you know, like I, like we said, the, the lovely sister Kimberly Fields. Uh, what you heard here was something that you probably never heard before, and you're going to hear more of it. And I am too honored to be able to share this with you, because it's not to make fun of or do anything, but let you guys know, because. We love you also. We're all connected. Please hearken to the voice. Because if you ever believed, then the time is now to get the understanding. Till next time, guys, this is your host, Brandy J, Voices of Courage. Peace.